Today we're going to talk about prayer, tefillah in Hebrew, and psychology. It's an important conversation, especially as of late, where we're all in some degree of distress or another and may be turning toward prayer. And there's many things I would like to talk to you about in regard to this matter that's very dear to my heart and to, I would imagine, many other religious people. The problem is that there's so much to say about this. I will start today with, uh, with some ideas, and I do believe we will continue this uh, for a couple of discussions. The first idea I want to help you get across is that you should really forget everything that you've learned. Um, a lot of ideas that we have about prayer and a lot of the habits that we've developed about prayer are quite faulty. Um, they're not according to the halacha, and they're not conducive for psychological growth. I'll give you a couple uh, for starters, but let's just talk about forgetting. Uh, the famous uh, Amora Rabbi Zera, it's told in uh, Bav Metzia on Daf 85a, it's told that when he wanted to go to, to Eretz Yisrael, when he wanted to go to the land of Israel in order to study under the masters over there, he originally studied in, in Bavel, in Babylonia, and he fasted a hundred fasts in order to forget what he had learned in Babylonia so that he'd be able to study afresh and learn something new in um, Israel. And that's what we need to do. We have some awful, awful ingrained habits about prayer that is um, destructive and hurtful to our own psychology, to our own well-being. Let me start with the uh, the worst and the first, and that is that at an early age, unfortunately, we have been taught to lie, to lie about our prayers. Um, what school-aged child doesn't um, lead prayer um, in the classroom or maybe says Alenu or Anem Zmiros in shul and isn't rushed along by the expectations of the people around him to finish the prayer. And kids cannot read as fast as adults. So even if you have an adult who's highly proficient in saying all the words machine gun rapid style, how is it possible for a child to do that? They are coerced and pressured uh, silently, but nevertheless quite clearly, to rush through the words, to not say all the words, to just say the words, the last few words out loud. Um, this is incredibly destructive because our first introduction to prayer is basically a falsehood. Um, that is just, I, I can't even begin to tell you. I think if you start to wake up and realize the implications of that, that alone is enough to send um, us into a spiral of confusion and despair. But don't worry, confusion is good because like Revizera, you can't learn something new if you aren't willing to let go of something old. And confusion is the process of realizing that something that you believed um, isn't quite as true as you thought. So it's really good to be confused. I want you to stay confused. Um, there's something else very interesting. The first simon in Shulchan Aruch, we don't have to go very far. The first simon in Shulchan Aruch says, Tov ma'at bekavana." It is uh, good to do a small amount. It is actually preferred to pray a small amount with kavana than a large amount without kavana. And we have to even talk about what kavana is. Oh my, my, our agenda is very full today, and we're not going to cover all that. But just think about that, because, you know, Probably some of you don't remember this, because many of you are younger than I, but after the Iraq war, I suppose, in the uh, 90s, uh, there was a discussion, uh, the people should say, to heal him after davening, and there were a few kapitluch that people started to say. Um, and it was very regrettable that uh, the rabbis didn't make a sunset clause on that. Um, we have young people today who think that that's a part of davening, um, it's not a part of davening to say those kapitlach Um If only, if only 
people would be able to have kavana for some parts of the davening, let alone saying extra pieces. Uh, I have a lot more to say to you about this, uh, and I hope that we will get to some very interesting and enriching pieces. But right now what I want you to do is I want you to be confused, and I want you to realize that there may be assumptions and bad habits that you have picked up that do not help. And I'd like you to think about just that one thing before you start praying. Tov ma'at b'kavana, me'har shalom b'kavana. Now, it's complicated because there are ob obligatory prayers, and we have to talk about what to do about that, too. But what I would say that you should do right now, next time you pray, is to meditate on that idea for a moment and to set a timer, whether it's two minutes, five minutes, I don't know what a person is naturally able to focus on, but to set a timer for a small amount of time and at least begin with paying attention to that, even though we haven't even talked about what kavana is supposed to be. And don't think it's about the translation of the words. That is not kavana. That will get you a good uh, mark on a test if you took a test in school on that. Of course, tests are useless anyway, but that's another conversation for a different day. Until tomorrow, keep praying.